So this is the first video cast for chapter 17, Additional Aspects of Equilibrium. This first one is from section 17.1 in your textbook called The Common Ion Effect. As we learned back in chapter 16, salts can dissolve in water to form acidic or basic solutions. In the common ion effect, we'll take a salt and dissolve it in a solution that it already contains a weak acid or base, and it ends up we'll have the salt, which dissociates in water, along with that weak acid and base together in a solution. When we have them together and they have an ion that is in common with each other, we have what's called the common ion effect. Let's take a look at an example of how this would work. Let's say, for instance, we had a salt like NaF, sodium fluoride. When sodium fluoride dissolves in water, it would form sodium ions and fluoride ions. Let's say that we took that sodium fluoride and we dissolved it in a solution that was hydrofluoric acid, an aqueous solution of hydrofluoric acid. Now, hydrofluoric acid is a weak electrolyte. It's a weak acid, and it will partially dissociate to give us a little bit of fluoride ions and a little bit of hydrogen ions. But how does it affect already having some fluoride ion in the solution from the dissociated NaF? Well, if we write the equation for this, if we write the equation for this, weak electrolyte, HF, the weak acid, plus water, will give us some H3O plus and some F minus. Well, we have some HF from the weak acid, and we already have some F minus from the sodium fluoride that dissolved in solution. Now, if you look at this in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, generally you'd say if there was none of this in there, their equilibrium would shift a bit to the right and we'd get some of this and some of this. But since we have some of this in here because of the sodium fluoride solution, if you add a concentration of an ion that already exists in the solution and you increase this amount, it should shift the equilibrium the other direction. As a matter of fact, that's what it does. And it makes the H3O plus ion concentration be a little bit less as well, and therefore it's not as acidic a solution, and therefore the pH would be just a little bit higher. Let's take a look at how we can mathematically calculate this and not just qualitatively look at it according to Le Chatelier's principle by looking at some sample problems from chapter 17. If you don't have this handout yet, please make sure you download it or make sure you pick one of these up in class because you've got to have the example problems from chapter 17 page along with you so then you can follow along with some of the wordage as we work these sample problems. The first problem says calculate the pH of a solution containing 0 0.085 molar nitrous acid and it gives us the Ka for that weak acid and then it says 0.1 molar potassium nitrite solution. Now when you work these types of problems in chapter 17 that have more than one thing in them, there's some good steps you can follow to be successful in them. And if you follow these four steps, more than likely you'll be able to figure out what's in the solution and what really matters. Step number one is to identify, identify or ID the species that are in the solution. What are the ions that are in there and what are the molecular things or the things that don't completely dissociate in solution. Step number two is identify what the weak things are. Identify what is the weak acid or base or what is the weak electrolyte in there because it's the weak thing that we're going to want to write the equation about because it only partially dissociates. Step number three then, once you've identified the weak thing, write an ice table. Write an ice table. Ice the weak thing. Write an ice table with the weak thing and then you can figure out where your common ions fit in there. And then step number four, use the Ka or the Kb of the weak acid to solve the problem for whatever they're asking for. So if we follow these four steps in this problem and our next two sample problems, we should have some pretty decent success. So it tells us that we have nitrous acid in here. Nitrous acid, remember, is HNO2. Remember, HNO3 is a strong acid, but this is a weak acid, HNO2. So if we're just looking at species in solution, here's one of them that happens to be weak acid or base, and we might want to circle star, square, box that so we remember what it is. It also tells us that there's some potential 
potassium nitrite in the solution. Potassium nitrite's formula is KNO2. And if you remember back from chapter four, anything containing pass potassium in it is going to be a soluble salt. It's going to be a soluble substance and it's gonna give us some K plus ions and it's also gonna give us some NO2 minus ions. And if you remember back from chapter 16, when you dissolve a salt in water, it can ask that act acidic, basic, or neutral. But if it comes from a strong base, it's not going to do anything. NO2 minus, of course, though, came from a weak acid, this HNO2 right here, so it's going to act a bit basic in solution. And if you're a good visualizer right now, you can see that HNO2 and NO2 minus have something in common. Look at that. They have the NO2 minus ion in common. So we've identified the species. We've identified the weak acid or base in here, HNO2. Now ice the weak. Make an ice table of the weak. So I'll move down here so we've got a little bit more room to do it. And I'll put HNO2 down. I'll react it with water, just like we do with any weak acid or base. Double arrow it because it is a weak substance. We'll make some H3O plus because the HNO2 is going to donate a proton. And then we'll get some leftover NO2 minus ion after the acid has released its proton right here. Now I'll write an ice table, I, C, E, initial change equilibrium. And initially we're told that we have 0 0.085 molar concentration of HNO2. Water, we don't care about, remember, because that's a pure liquid and it's not going to be in the equilibrium expression anyway. Never put a pure liquid or a pure solid in the equilibrium expression. H3O plus, we don't have any of that to start with. But NO2 minus, we do have some of that dissolved in solution. Because remember, we've got this salt up here that happens to be a 0.1 molar solution. And if the salt is 0.1 molar, well, how many NO2 minuses are in there? Well, that is also going to be a 1 to 1 ratio, therefore 0.1 one molar in NO2 minus as well. So initially we also have a 0.1 molar NO2 minus in the solution. Now we ice it, so we're going to lose a certain amount of NO2 minus. We will gain a certain amount of H3O plus, and we'll gain a certain amount of NO2 minus when this HNO2 weak acid dissociates. We end up with 0 0.085 minus X. Over here I end up with X amount of H3O plus, and I end up with 0 0.1, whoops, 0 0.1 plus X over here. Now I want to write my equilibrium constant expression since it did give me the Ka, I can fill that in right away as well. The Ka for this is equal to 4.5 times 10 to the negative fourth, 4.5 times 10 to the negative fourth, and that will equal my products over here, which are x times 0.1 plus x, divided by 0 0.085 minus x. Now, I can simplify this a little bit because it looks a little bit crazy to uh, solve right now by making some approximations. And my approximations are is that this z x right here is going to be small compared to 0.1. And I'll also make an approximation that this x right here is going to be small compared to 0 0.085. This helps a ton because now I can have an equation that is 0.1x divided by 0 0.085 is equal to my 4.5 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now I need to solve this critter for x and if, uh, if I do this I'll get x equal to 4.5 times 10 to the negative fourth, x equal to 4.5 times 10 to the negative fourth times 0 0.085 divided by 0 0.1, bringing this over to this side. And if I punch that into my calculator, I'll get approximately 3.825 times 10 to the negative fourth. 
times 10 to the negative fourth. Now go, going back to look at the question, this is equal to x, and remember x can tell me the H3O plus ion concentration. It could also tell me how much NO2 minus concentration I have in here. The question asks calculate the pH. So the species or the thing, the, the ion of interest here, of course, is what is the H3O plus ion concentration? And if I take the negative logarithm of that, I'll have my pH. So take the negative log of 3.825 times 10 to the negative fourth. And if I want to approximate that, I can separate this, if you watch the logs video, as the negative log of 3.825 plus the negative log of 10 to the negative fourth. Negative log of 10 to the negative fourth, of course, is going to be 4. The negative log of 3.8 if you forgot your approximations, hmm, I just happen to have them handy here. The negative log of 3 is 0.5, the log of 5 is 0.7, so it's somewhere in between there. So since it's uh, 3.8, let's guess approximately 0.6. We'll go with 0.6 in there. So this is going to be negative 0.6. Negative 0.6 plus 4 is about 3.4 for a pH. If you want to try it on your calculator, you're more than welcome to do so, but you get pretty close to a pH of 3.4. Let's take a look at a second example problem now. This one says calculate the fluoride ion concentration and pH of a solution that is 0.2 molar in HF and 0.1 molar in HCl. Ooh, we've got a weak acid HF and a strong acid HCl. And it says use appendix D to find the Ka of HF. I'm going to pull out a new piece of paper here so we can work this problem without having this other stuff on there. Okay. First step, if we follow along, is to identify the species that are in the solution. We've got HF in there. We also have some HCl in the solution. Identify the weak species. Remember, that's the second step. Step First step, identify the species that are in there. Second, what's the weak acid or base? And then we're going to ice the weak. So, uh, HF, I know, is a weak acid or base, so I've identified the weak. HCl is a strong acid. Remember, that will break up to give me H plus and Cl minus in whatever concentration we're told that it is. Since we're told that it is 0.1 molar in HCl, I know I'll end up with 0.1 molar H plus and 0.1 molar Cl minus in that solution. And of course, none of the molecular HCl in there anymore. HF, I'm told, is 0.2 molar in the solution, and that stick pretty much together, but remember some of it will break up and that's the one we want to write our ice table for. So take HF and let's react it with water like we do with any good weak acid or base and break it up into some H3O plus because HF is going to donate a proton and we'll get some F minus. And if I write an ice table for this, ice table this. I know that I'll start with approximately 0.2 molar of this guy. The water, remember, isn't going to matter because that's a pure liquid and it never goes in the equilibrium constant expression. H3O plus, remember, that's the same as H plus. So that's this guy right here and we get some of that from the HCl that happens to be the common ion with HF. So we start with 0.1 molar of this critter right here. And F minus, we don't have any of that to start with because that's only going to come from the HF. Now we can ice it where we're going to lose X right here. We will gain X over here and we'll gain an X amount of this as well. So we end up with X, 0.1 plus X, and here 0.2 minus X. And if we write the equilibrium constant expression for this, I can write that the Ka of HF is going to equal Ka of HF is going to equal 0.1 plus x, that's this guy right here, times x, divided
divided by 0.2 minus x. That comes from right over here. That's my reactance. Okay, let's make some simplifications here to make this a little bit easier so I can solve for x because the thing that the question asked for is what is the fluoride ion concentration and that's x right here. First of all, if I look up the Ka in the uh, back of the book, I find out that the Ka for HF is 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. So I can put that in first. And then let's make some assumptions. Let's assume that this x is fairly small compared to the point 0.1. And let's assume that this x is fairly small compared to the point 0.2. Well, now it becomes a pretty easy problem. Point 0.1 divided by point 0.2 is the same as well, 1 half, right? So I have 1 half x is equal to 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now if I plug that into my calculator and multiply this by 2, or maybe you can just multiply it by 2 in your head, you end up with approximately 1.4 times 10 to the negative third is the value for x. This, remember, is equal to my F minus ion concentration, and that's what the question asked. Let's say that the question asked, though, what is the pH of the solution? What's the pH? Well, I can look back up here and notice what is my H3O plus ion concentration, which, of course, is the thing that drives the pH. Well, it's 0.1 plus X. I know what X is, so if I go back down here, I'd take the negative logarithm of whatever 0.1 plus x is, and since x is 1.4 times 10 to the negative third, I'd add those two together. And if you add 1.4 times 10 to the negative third to 0.1, you'll find out pretty quickly that this is pretty small compared to 0.1. And so really what my pH is pretty much going to be is just the negative log of 0.1, which can also be written as 1 times 10 to the negative first. And what's the negative log of negative 1? Well, it's 1. My pH is going to be approximately 1. Notice that the pH is pretty much driven exclusively by the concentration of the HCl. The HF did not have a huge effect on the pH at all. A tiny bit, but not very much. Take a look at the next page, please. I'd like you to try this problem right now. Pause the video and go through our four steps and see if you can set up the ice table and see if you can solve for the formate ion concentration of a solution that is 0 0.05 molar in formic acid and 0.1 molar in HNO3. Identify the weak thing, write the equilibrium uh, equation for the weak acid, in this case, and then ice table it. So go through your steps, I'll outline them once again. Identify the species, identify which one's weak, ice the weak thing, and then we'll use the Ka or the Kb. It's pretty easy to figure out what the weak thing is in these problems because they're almost always going to either give you the Ka or the Kb of it, or they'll tell you, look it up in the back of the book. Look what they give you the Ka of. So pause the video now and come back here and just to restart the video as soon as you've tried to calculate the formate ion concentration. Okay. If you're done, you can take the formate ion, uh, formic acid now, HCHO2, identify that as the weak species in the solution, and so you have to draw the equilibrium equation for this. It will be a donor of a hydrogen, and you end up with H3O plus and some CHO2 minus, and then ice table it. Initially, we start out as point 0 0.05 molar in formic acid and 0.1 molar in HNO3. Remember HNO3, that's going to break up and that's going to give us some H plus and some NO3 minus. And if you know NO3 minus came from a, a well, it's going to spectate in solution, but the H plus is already present in here. So we're going to start with 0.1 molar HNO3 and none of this. Remember the water doesn't matter because it's a uh, pure liquid. So then we'll lose X here, gain X here, and gain X here, and we end up with 0.1 plus X for our H3O plus, X for our CHO2 minus, and 0.1 0 0.05 minus x here for our formic acid.
it, it wants us to find the formate ion concentration, which is going to be solving for x, very similar to the problem we did a little bit ago. And we can set up the equilibrium constant expression now, where we take the products x times 0.1 plus x divided by 0 0.05 minus x is equal to the Ka, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. We'll make some assumptions now. We'll assume this x is small and this x is small compared to 0.1 or 0 0.05. And so I end up with x times 0.1 divided by 0 0.05. I solve x as 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth times 0.5 divided by 0 .4, uh, 0 0.1, bringing these to the other side of the equation. And x turns out to be about 9 times 10 to the negative fifth, I believe. 9 times 10 to the negative fifth. This is my formate ion concentration. If I wanted to find the pH, once again, I can look up here and it's just like the last problem where I'd take the negative logarithm of about 0.1 because that's uh, you know significantly larger than what x would be since x is pretty darn small times 10 to the negative fifth. And I'd end up with a pH of about 1 again. But this is my formate ion concentration and helped answer the first question. Good luck with your common ion problems.